Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeCharis, CPA, pulling my suspenders off. Uh, coming to you live from downtown Bethpage, Long Island, New York, for another amazing episode of How to Win at Business and How to Win at Your Taxes. I mean, this, this is amazing. It's uh, February 1st, 2022, and never in my life did I, I think I would be approaching my accounting and tax business the way I am now. But the truth is, folks, that we are we're in a battle. It's like a silent war. Uh, and the IRS is, is getting their troops ready. It's like the the it's like Russia putting their their troops on, on the border of the Ukraine. You know, they have a hundred thousand troops on the border. You know, there's always something going on in the world. And that that's uh that's what's going on right now. Hopefully, if you're watching this at some other time, uh, it's not happening. But just like Russia putting troops on the border of the Ukraine, the IRS is is uh, in the process of hiring up to 85,000 IRS agents whose who sole uh, responsibility is to, to be uh, collecting unpaid taxes from who? Not from rich people, not from big corporations, because they're all over them already. They're, they're already all over them. They can't be, you know, more over them. I mean, they're, they're, it's like trying to squeeze uh, water from or blood from a stone, whatever the term is. But you, you get the idea. No, they're going to be coming after small people, sp the people that can least afford it, the people that can't defend themselves, small business owners. Uh, and some of them, you know, I could see uh, need to be gotten, need to be gotten. People that open corporations and never file returns, uh, people that notoriously were working in cash businesses. Well, guess what? There's not too much cash around anymore. And now the, the IRS is keen to it. They're, they're basically telling the banks that if, if somebody is depositing cash, believe it or not, they're supposed to ask, where did you get this cash from? So, you know, the times of uh, under the table are, are uh, quickly, quickly diminishing. Everything's going digital, which means everything's going to be machine driven. And, and this just didn't happen overnight, folks. This has been planned for decades and decades. I can go as far back as when, as when I started in accounting, which was 40 years ago. And it was going on even before that, you know, issues like this independent contractor versus employee issue. It was always an issue. And, and if you're not familiar with it, what it is, is when you're an employer, it costs a lot of money to have an employee. You got to pay, pay your share of payroll taxes. You got to pay uh, workers comp insurance, disability insurance. Uh, you have all kinds of compliance issues with uh collecting taxes, reporting wages, not only to the federal government, but to the state and a lot of times local governments. You know, everybody wants their cut of the pie. Well, it was a lot easier for business owners to treat people as independent contractors. And now what that meant was they weren't employees. They weren't treated as employees, which put them, which put them in a whole different legal category, a whole different reporting and compliance category. It was very convenient for the employer. And guess what? The employee had no taxes taken out, uh, which was good for them, allegedly, and also bad for them. If they reported their income, and a lot of them didn't, and that, that's who the IRS is going after, a lot of them didn't, but if they did report their income, let's say they were making a thousand dollars a week, fifty-two thousand a year, and now they have no taxes taken out. Well, and and let's just assume they have no business deduction, so that we don't complicate this. Well, fifty-two thousand net profit that now they got to shell out fifteen percent, almost eight thousand dollars. Uh, in, in Social Security taxes that weren't taken out. So 52 minus eight, you're, you're down to 44. And now you got to pay income taxes, which also were not withheld. Now, some people that were smart 
paid quarterly estimated tax, but, but those were few and far between. Okay. To even know that you had to do that and to properly do it, that you needed an accountant. Not many people were able to do that on their own. Yeah, there were, you know, some, but, you know, those were few and far between as well. So, you know, when push comes to shove, a small business trying to make ends meet, you know, and we're talking about small businesses, not big corporations that are doing even hundreds or millions of dollars a year. The, these are people, you know, making less than 100K a year. So, yeah, when they say, oh, if I got a choice, I can run a payroll and pay the payroll company, you know, let's say $50 a month. And then I got to take out the taxes. And then I, I also, you know, the employer, you figure, I would tell if an employer, if a client was in a uh, non-hazardous profession, like let's say they were a consultant or they had a, an office uh, where the workers comp wasn't that expensive, I would say you got to add at least 10% to everybody's pay as as an expense so if you're paying somebody a thousand dollars a week well it's costing you 1100 so now you have the the business owner that is weighing well what do i do are they an employee well guess what they would rather have them be an an independent contractor and years past let's say 10 years and beyond it was very difficult for the IRS to police the issuing of 1099s because the, the rule was if you paid an independent contract of $600 or more, you had to issue them a 1099. Okay, well, because it was very hard to enforce, a, I would say a majority of small business owners never bothered. Now, I know this because I would tell my clients, we got to do a 1099, and very few of them listened to me. And there, there were no repercussions. There, there was no blowback. Unless there was, and in very few cases, maybe there was a Department of Labor audit. I've had clients that were in the, in the construction business. So in New York State, you know, they, they are under the microscope more now than ever. So I've had clients that, not the IRS, the Department of Labor would come in and say, hey, these people are subject. They wouldn't say, oh, they're employees expecting the, uh, the business owner to go and file W-2s because that, that's what happens if the IRS comes in. So I'm going to go quickly over that. But what the state wants is they want the unemployment insurance, Okay. So that's another uh, expense. And if you don't know what unemployment insurance is, the, the employer pays that. It's, it's a totally employer-driven uh, expense. And uh, they, they pay up to a certain dollar amount for each employee. And again, it, it depends on your rating. If you have low turnover, you pay a low rate. If you have high turnover, you pay a high rate. So that 10%, that's if they're in a low uh, unemployment rate and a low, you know, uh, not a hazardous industry. So you get my point. It, it costs a lot of money uh, to, to run a payroll. Well, I'd say about maybe eight or 10 years ago, the IRS started with these two little questions on, on, on business returns. They're on... Uh, sole proprietor returns and corporate and partnership returns. And they seem in innocent, but they're not. The question is, are you required or were you required during the last taxable year to file form 1099, to, to file forms 1099? Now, if you said no and you were required, well, guess what? You just lied on a return. You just lied on your tax return, which that in itself isn't going to put anybody in jail, but it is going to raise an auditor's eyebrow and say, well, what else did you lie about? Uh, now, if you said yes, 
The next question, so the first question is, are you required? The next question is, well, did you file? Well, if you said, yes, I'm required, and no, I didn't file, <laughs> well, guess what? Red flag. So what the IRS is looking for, what they want is yes and yes. Yes, I was required, and yes, I filed. Because most businesses, myself included, hire independent contractors. It's just, especially in today's uh, environment, it's easier to hire somebody uh, as a, as a let, let's say, subcontractor. That, that's what they are. You know, I'm going to hire my web designer. They're, they're a subcontractor. Uh, even a lawyer, a, an accountant, those are not employees. Those are independent contractors. Well, you know, lo and behold, uh, last year, the IRS came up with a new 1099. It's called the 1099 NEC, non-employee compensation. So they're making more of a distinction between the 1099 MISC, 1099 MISC, miscellaneous, meaning it, it included uh, other areas of, of, of uh, revenue, like rent, uh, interest, and dividend. No, those are different 1099s. A anyway, there it, it made it less confusing. It's like, okay, you're a, a non-employee. You're getting a, a 1099. And the first thing I'm going to share this with you is is form 1099 i mean uh, w9 so this is the form that employers are required to uh to request from any independent contractor now you, so let's go through the form it's very simple very straightforward name your name if you're a sole proprietor uh or your business name if different from above. Okay, so you got to put your name. So if I was fi filling this out, it would be Joe DeChara and line two would be Bedrock Business Builders Corp. I am classified as a C Corp. Okay, that's how I'm structured. And, and the other options are you're an individual or you're a single member LLC. Uh, you're taxed as an S Corp. You're a partnership. You're a trust or an estate uh, or a limited liability company that's being that's elected to be taxed as a C corp, an S corp, or a partnership. Okay, and then there's other. Okay, and it says C instructions. I don't have enough time to go into a deep dive. Uh, now there's uh, exemptions. Okay, so again, you have to go into the instructions. That doesn't happen a lot in 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 my world, which is small businesses, uh, small uh, S-Corps, sole proprietors that we turn into S-Corps, uh, LLCs that we we turn into S-Corps for tax purposes. The address. Now, this is very, very important because if you're an entity, you want to be identified as an entity. Okay, if you're an entity, a C Corp, S Corp, LLC, partnership, you want the 1099 issued to your business, not you, your name. Okay, so we get down to if you're a business, you should have an EIN number, employer identification number. Okay, if you don't have an employer identification number, that means that you're a sole proprietor and you got to use your social security number. Or you're an LLC that never, that did not make an election to be taxed as an entity. Okay, so you're either an individual. So if you're an individual, you got to use your Social Security number. If you're an an entity, you want to use your your tax ID number. Now, the signature. I want to point something out here that people just don't seem to uh, realize. Anytime you sign a tax return. There's the certification. Under penalties of perjury, I certify that the number on this form is correct. Uh, I am subject. I am not subject to backup withholding. So let me explain what backup withholding is. Uh, backup withholding is somebody that uh, has been flagged by the IRS 
as you know, probably not paying their taxes, not providing their their tax identification number. It happens a lot with uh, with bank accounts with interest and dividends because sometimes the, they they just don't get the the tax ID number, and in that case, the payer is required to withhold. I think it was twenty percent or 28%. I don't, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. It's been a long time since I actually had to do back backup withholding. It does not happen a lot. Okay. Because of the things I just explained, usually people that were independent contractors didn't sign a W-9 form. They didn't have a 1099 issued. So there was no backup withholding. So backup withholding, if you are subject to it, so let's say you're subject to it and you say you're not, well, you just lied on a tax form all, again. And again, just like on your personal return, any business return, any payroll tax return, sales tax return, on you are subject to penalties of perjury. I guess that's sort of like the, the mail fraud thing. It's like if they can't get you on something else, they can always get you on perjury. If, if you can't, it's like Al Capone, they couldn't get him on, on murder, but they got him on tax evasion. Yeah, pretty clever. So that's it. It's a pretty straightforward form. It seems innocent enough, but it's really not, folks. It's really not. Because this is what they're going to be using as the as what I call the dragnet. Okay? It's, it's the way that they're forcing small business owners to, to become their unwilling, unpaid police department, okay? Because now if I'm a business owner and I need to do, you know, obtain this information to file uh, the Form 1099, and let's look at the Form 1099, I'm going to, because this is really the objective. It's not just to get the people's name and ID number. The idea is at the end of the year, you're going to add up all of the numbers, how much you pay them, and you're going to enter to that information on, on this form. Now, this red form is what actually uh, gets filed with the IRS. This is what we used to send when we did everything by hand. I I don't you you can't file by hand. If you do, you you could be subject to a penalty. I know as an as a CPA, I got to have a really good reason for filing by hand. They probably accept them from people, individuals that just can't do it for whatever reason. Uh, they probably get penalized. I don't know. I don't come across a lot of those situations to be honest with you. But let's just scroll down here. So then there's the copy for the state tax department, you know, that especially in a state like California. So what California has done, they started doing this uh, a couple of years ago. They look for this and then they go after the business owners and claim that, oh, they aren't independent. These people are employees. And, and it's really uh, that's a whole nother subject. But. California is uh, forcing businesses out of California. And not only that, like if I have a choice, I'm not hiring somebody that works in California because who knows, they, they might come to me, even though I'm in New York and they, they might say, hey, you, uh, this person isn't independent. You, you have to pay the payroll taxes. And what they're looking for, again, is the unemployment taxes. OK, and it could get to be as as bad as if the IRS gets involved. Now you have to make a case that they're, they're independent they're not they're not employees. It comes down to control. There's all these uh, rules that, that have to be followed and it comes down really to facts and circumstances. But if you control somebody's. Uh, schedule uh they use your tools if they're an auto mechanic they come they they work on your schedule you pay them by the hour they're using your tools not their own tools they're an employee if they're a carpenter they have their own business they have a website they they use their own tools they make their own schedule uh then they're probably independent but that that's a whole nother story so my purpose with this tonight really is to uh, 
uh, identify what what's the whole rhubarb about or you know uh, issue when it comes to this because not by coincidence yesterday was the deadline for these to be mailed out to individuals uh, they have to be filed with the IRS by February 28th and this is you know what I've been saying that this is going I've told my clients already this has become more important than ever because this is the 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 way the IRS is going to flag people and how are they going to flag them to to be honest with you I can't tell you that I know for sure I could tell you based on my experience that if you're a business owner and you have categories on your return like professional fees web design social media you know the the kinds of expenses where you're going to hire independent contractors and you don't file a 1099 let's say you have commissions on your on your tax return you pay people commissions or affiliate fees okay and you don't file 1099s, well, guess what? I believe that you're going to be targeted. So now let's say you are a, an independent contractor and you don't get the 1099 from this company and they're targeted. Well, guess what? You're going to be targeted too. So this might take a couple of years, people, and they, they go back, you know, if they, they start in, let's say, 2023. Actually, they've already started. They've already started. I've heard of S-Corps already getting audited for 2021, uh, and it was only, you know, six months into the year. That's unheard of. Usually it takes them 12 to 18 months to pick somebody for audit, and then it takes time to do the audit. So that's why this this has become so crucial for for small business owners to get on board, make sure that you get those W-9 forms. And and let me end with this, folks. You know, we have clients and and this is uh, when people get used to doing business in a certain way, it's hard to break habits. Any any habit is hard to break. So they're not used, business owners are not used to asking independent contractors for their tax ID number. They know if, if they hire an employee, there's all kinds of forms they got to fill out. They got to get, you know, the social security uh, number. They got to get uh, forms of ID. You got to fill out an I-9, which is a Homeland Security form. It's not even an IRS form because what they're trying to find uh, let's face it, they're trying to find terrorists. They're trying to find people that aren't really supposed to be working here. Uh, that's a whole nother issue. But so there, our client, my clients, small business clients are basically not trained to ask independent contractors for this information. So what do they do? They start scrambling at the end of the year adding up oh who's 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 got to get one who went over the six hundred dollars let's let's ask them for their info now so the deadline to send these out were yesterday not the irs deadline but technically you're supposed to give them to the people that you paid so that they can do their tax returns now technically they don't need the 1099 because it doesn't get attached to their return they're supposed to report all their income so really the recipients don't even need a 1099 the 1099 is not for them a w-2 is for the employee because they need it it used to be that the w-2 got attached to the return when we were filing paper returns uh, now everything's electronic but I need those forms, those W-2 forms, because I have to put all of that information on the W-2 into my tax program. I do not have to put all the 1099 info in. The, the info is there if I want to enter it. But the bottom line is uh, your if your gross revenue as an independent business does not add up to the 1099s, uh, there's a problem. You're either going to get just a bill saying, hey, you didn't report this income. You forgot 
you know, or you're going to get audited. Okay. So what's the plan? The plan going forward is before you pay somebody, whether they're a corporation, LLC, sole proprietor, before you pay them, you need to get this tax info. I had a question. Well, what if I only paid somebody $300? Do I need to? Yeah, you need to get the W-9 form because how do you know you're not going to pay him another $300 during the year? Okay. If you have somebody, clean, you know, maintenance workers, somebody cleaning up your, your warehouse, your office, guess what? You got to ask them for a 1099 uh, W-9 form. Now, for those people that don't have a a social security card or an employer, uh, and a federal identification number. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, in other words, they're illegal. They don't have a work permit. They're not supposed to, they're not citizens. They're not technically supposed to be working here. You have to get the, the they're eligible to, to uh, apply for a, a temporary identification number, a TIN, okay, which is a whole nother story uh, because, you know, if you look at the IRS, what they say is, oh, yeah, if to be, to get a W-2, you, you can get a TIN, a temporary identification number, and that it's not meant to be a replacement for a Social Security number. So it's temporary because you cannot legally, as an employer, you cannot legally hire an illegal immigrant. That's They're illegal. So if you hire somebody with a TIN, you better get their Social Security number when it's issued. Because like I said, it's temporary. So it's the same thing with a W-9 form. If they have a temporary identification number, you have to use that. And guess what? You have to do the backup with all them. So that's my story. I'm sticking with it. I didn't see any comments come through on uh, on the on the chat here. If you do have a comment, uh, put it in the chat. I will you know, get to it. That's one of the beauties of, of Facebook and YouTube. If you, if you ask a question, uh, I will definitely get back to you. Now, if you want to book a, a free chat with me on, on this subject or any subject that has to do with, with taxes or, or your business, I invite you to visit Time with Joe. Uh, and if you don't want to do that, you can go to my website, bedrockbusinessbuilders.com. And we have a lot of tools and resources, information about me, about my team, about our free workshop. So, so visit us. Uh, God bless. Uh, thank you and, and stay safe. And I will see you again for another amazing episode of